Hey guys, welcome to a composites video from the Ultralight Airplane Workshop. In this video, we're going to talk about preparing fairly small solid foam cores to get them prepared for vacuum resin infusion. I've prepared quite a few foam cores for these sample carbon fiber sandwiches that I've been making for testing. All of them I've done so far have been 1 8 inch and I've had two different densities of this vinyl cell that I've been using, the H45 and the H80. The H45 is about three and a half pounds foam per cubic foot. The H80 is about five pounds foam per cubic foot. And I've talked in a previous video about why the H80 might be better than the H45, at least at these thin thicknesses, in this case, eighth inch foam. I did quite a bit of experimenting in earlier videos with hole patterns and I finally settled on one inch by one inch square holes that I generate using a six penny nail that I have filed flat on the end. And then I push it into the foam to make my hole. And I still like that method for these small samples. Now, if this were a really large sample, well, let's say this sheet here is uh, 32 inches by 48 inches. That would be way too many holes to punch in. So I would try to find foam that's already pre-punched and possibly scored. Now it does add a little more expense. So if you can tolerate the time to put all the holes in, maybe it's worth doing that. But for these small samples, the small amount of time it takes to put in the holes, I'm perfectly happy to save a little money and do those holes myself. One of the things I'm going to experiment with this time is making the holes a little bit farther apart I've been having great success with the one inch spacing. So I'm gonna to go to one and a half inch spacing and see how well that works out. Now, another thing I'm going to do is I'm gonna bevel the edges of the foam. And the reason I'm gonna do that is that carbon fiber, as stiff as it is, and even fiberglass, it doesn't bend well around corners. And let's see if I can demonstrate this. Now I'm gonna assume that this is stiffer than it really is. But as you bend, try to bend around a corner, you can kind of see here, I'll exaggerate a little bit, but the carbon fiber cannot make a sharp bend. It's going to bow up a little bit and it'll bow over here a little bit. Well, that's no good. That's going to end up creating a reservoir for resin. So it's going to make the part heavier and we really don't want that. And then, when it comes down to this bottom corner down here, of course, it's not gonna make that sharp corner and there's gonna be a little bit of a bend and that's gonna leave another reservoir for epoxy to build up. And we don't want that to happen either. So what we will do is we will bevel the corners and you can kind of see that here with the eighth inch piece, I beveled all these corners so that the carbon fiber does not make as sharp a turn. Now, ideally, we would actually round those corners and then round out at the bottom. That takes a lot of work and I don't think it's necessarily required. So what I do is I just sand a 45 degree bevel on all my pieces. And you can see that I've drawn my lines here to do just that. Now, I want my flat piece of the foam to be six inches wide and about 11 and a half inches long. I'm actually, in this test, going to make three pieces of foam. An eighth inch thick piece, a one quarter inch thick piece, and a three eighths inch piece. And that's because in testing, I want to demonstrate how thickness changes the stiffness of your sandwich, even though you're leaving the fabric the same on each side of your sandwich. So the question is, how much bigger do I need to make my piece in order to get this bevel the right size and, and, and the inside the right size? Now, if I have a 3 8 inch thick piece of foam, then I need to come back 3 8 of an inch to where I want my flat top to be in order to get the right width of my foam. And that's what I've drawn out here. I have 3 8 of an inch. I will cut on this outside line, and then the inside line is where my flat top of the foam will be. What I use for cutting these lines is I've got a great big framing square, and I've drawn my lines so that I want to cut right down the middle of the line to get the correct line placement. And I've been using these breakaway razors to do my cutting. They work fairly well, they're fairly cheap. 
I want to keep pressure against my framing square. It's very, very easy as I'm cutting along here for this razor to start wandering away from the edge of the framing square. There we have it. I'm going to do the same sort of thing for my other thicknesses. For the eighth inch, I bring this line back an eighth of an inch. For my one quarter inch thickness, I bring the line a quarter of an inch back from the edge. There are a couple ways that we can cut this bevel on this edge. I've already done one on this side of this eighth inch piece of foam. And the way I did it this time was that uh, I used this aluminum backing plate so that the foam has something stiff to go against. And with a fairly sharp edge, I have a nice sharp razor knife and I bring another piece of wood on top to help support it. What I'm going to do is basically saw the bevel into this edge. And you have to be fairly careful because this knife will tend to want to ride up away from the edge. So you have to keep pushing it down and you have to use a sawing motion and you have to saw down. If you try to saw up, it'll push the eighth inch foam up away from this edge and that won't work very well. So, so on the down stroke, you pull and saw and then I come back a little bit when I go up and so all of the cutting action is down. You want to make sure you don't pull very hard because what you can do is at this edge where the foam is the thinnest, right down here, it will tear out the edge of the foam. And now you're creating gaps down there that epoxy would fill and it'll make your part harder. Now one of the things I've found with using this cutting method is I have a difficult time creating a nice uniform edge. It tends to ride up and down a little bit, and then of course, tearing out a little bit. So I'm not very fond of this method. And it doesn't really matter if you have an exact 45. You can be plus or minus five or maybe even 10 degrees and it'll work just fine. Now, I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but I have a fairly ragged edge here and that's because it was tearing out a little bit as I was trying to cut it. Now there's another method we can use. And we hold it the same way except we use a sanding block. And I believe this has, let me check the grit on this that I've been using. This is 60 grit that I've been using. So it's a fairly rough grit, but it cuts fairly rapidly. It doesn't cut as rapidly as using the razor knife, but it cuts pretty well. One of the advantages is that it doesn't tear out here along this edge. Now I always use a dusk mask when I'm doing this. I've already finished the eighth inch piece of foam. I did a side that was cut with just a knife and a side that's sanded. And I, the side cut with the knife is very ragged here on the pointed edge, which I expected. It took about the same amount of time to cut with the knife as it did to sand on this eighth inch piece. On the quarter inch piece, I did the same thing. I cut with the knife here, and I don't know if you'll be able to tell with this camera, but this edge is a little bit wavy. Maybe I can, you might be able to see it that way. This edge was sanded and it's very straight. I got a fairly sharp edge here on the pointed edge. And it turns out on this one, this edge turned out pretty sharp too. It only took a little bit longer to sand than it did to cut with the knife. I also did two edges on the 3 8 inch foam. Now, actually, I guess I did four edges. It took forever to sand down this edge. Compared to cutting the knife, it just took a long, long time. Now, I actually ended up sanding it afterward because I did not do a good job of the sawing motion as I was cutting this, and it left some tears here in the face. And so I did some sanding to smooth that out. And in the process of doing that, I decided on this 3 8 inch foam, 
that's probably the best way to do this. You use the knife to do your rough cut and get it close, and then you end up moving it over like a 32nd of an inch closer to your edge and then you sand, and you'll get a nice pointed edge here, you'll remove the high spots, and it'll look pretty good. So I thought for this part of the video, I would just go ahead and do that for you. In the overall scheme of things, the unevenness as we're going along here probably doesn't really mean much. You won't ever notice it on the inside of the airplane, so it doesn't really matter. It would be nice to have a fairly sharp edge so you don't have epoxy buildup. At least on this ultralight, I want to try to keep as much unnecessary epoxy out of the part as possible. And you may have been able to tell on this edge, when I did the cut, it did some tearing here in the foam. That's going to create more pockets for epoxy to be in. So sanding it down helps remove any of that roughness so we don't get as much epoxy buildup. I really think that on this thicker foam, cutting it with knife and finishing it with sanding is probably the way to go. On the eighth inch, I think sanding alone is probably the way to go. And the quarter inch, it's six in one and a half a dozen the other. Well, now we come to the fun part where we're going to poke some holes in this foam. Now, as I said before, I use a six penny nail that I have ground the tip off of. And this one happens to have a nice flat head on it, so it makes it a little easier to push it in. A finishing nail has kind of a small head, and I've used those before, but I put a big wad of masking tape on the end so it won't uh, hurt my thumb as I'm pushing it in. I tried to arrange these holes so that I don't have any huge gap between the holes and the edge. And in this pattern, as I said before, I'm going to use an inch and a quarter square pattern instead of the one inch square pattern I've been using. Each hole adds a little bit of weight because it fills with epoxy. So I'm going to see if I can get away with the one and a half inch pattern. Now that all three of my samples I'm going to make may fail and I may have to end up doing this all over again except with the one inch pattern, but we'll see. So what I've done here is I use my square to help keep my holes in a fairly straight line and we just start punching holes. Now, as you can see, I'm using some styrofoam as my backing plate. That helps to keep the back edge of the hole fairly clean when I break through. If I try to use something like wood, then it wouldn't poke all the way through. So you can make a hole pattern fairly rapidly using this method. Now, if you happen to make a mistake in your hole pattern and you get a hole that's off a little bit, don't worry about it. Just go ahead and put one in the right spot. It won't hurt anything. Another advantage of going with the larger hole pattern is there are fewer holes, so it's much quicker to punch these. For a really large piece, let's say eight foot by four foot, I probably wouldn't go through all the trouble of punching these holes. I'd go ahead and find a distributor that would sell me the core with the holes already in it. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and do these other two. And we'll have our cores prepared and ready to go. I'm not gonna score the backside. So far, I've found that I don't need to, at least with the fabrics that I'm using and the vacuum pressure that I'm using. I did a vacuum resin fusion of the three cores with a two by two twill on one side, the vacuum bag side, and a biaxial carbon fiber on the other side. And both those layers are 200 grams per square meter. Well, I'm ready to pull off the vacuum bag and see if we succeeded with the resin fusion on the mold surface. The vacuum bag surface looks great. Let's see if the mold surface worked. If not, it's not a big loss. Lost a little bit of foam and carbon fiber, but not a big deal. We'll just have to switch back to our one inch pattern. Here it is. Oh no. 
Well, it did not work, but boy, it came close. You see a few patterns here where it did not quite fill in, but boy, it came awfully close. And you probably won't be able to see it from the camera, but I can see where the holes were. And I got a, almost a good finish back here. Not quite as good up here, but then good again here. Boy, that came really, really close to working. Well, with one inch patterns, I'm pretty sure that this would have worked. We would not have a failure. Or if I had scored it a little bit on the backside, it probably would also have worked. But we came really, really close. Well, it looks like it's time to make another sample set. I'm really enjoying making these videos. I hope you enjoy watching them. If you haven't done it yet, go ahead and subscribe and then hit that bell button so you get notified when a new video goes up on YouTube. And don't forget to like the Facebook page for the channel. There's a link to that down in the description. That's where I do some notifications for things that don't require an entire video. And if you'd like to support the channel directly, you can go to Patreon. There's a link for that down in the video description. And you can uh, help support the channel that way.